Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Khorasan, the Caliph and the Corrupter. Let's discuss right guidance. Right now, many people are anticipating the arrival of the Imam Mahdi, the Caliph to come, peace be upon him. And this is, this is a question that I would like to pose to you and I'd love to see your comments on this. What does right guidance look like how is right guidance expressed and experienced? If, right, if somebody was rightly guided standing in front of you, would you recognize them? Consider that throughout history, we have often not recognized prophets and oliya who have been in our presence. Even prophets, peace be upon them, don't always recognize an angel or another, uh, or another prophet. This has happened, I mean, like a, an example would be um, Ibrahim, alayhi, alayhi salam, not recognizing the angels. The Sahaba, when during the Jibreel alayhi salam um, hadith, they did not recognize that this man in white was an angel, was Jibreel. Um, you know, it's like, there have been many instances where, uh, you know, there's the Emmaus road story of Isa alayhi, alayhi, uh, alayhi salam. He is walking, like two of his disciples are walking on Emmaus Road after Isa has been purportedly executed for blasphemy and apostasy and, and treason. So against the, the rabbinic Jewish establishment, against the scholars and against the Roman state. So um, these two disciples are walking down Emmaus Road. Suddenly a stranger begins walking with them and they converse. They have a nice conversation. They stop at a, at a place along the way to have some food. And during the, the, the meal, Isa alayhi salam, he, he reveals who he is and that he is their teacher. And they didn't recognize him. He was in hither mode. Like uh, hither alayhi salam, he, like I look at him as an individual, but also a title. It's a role. And in this instance, he took that role on. So would you recognize the verdant one if he stood before you, the green one? Would you recognize a prophet if he stood in front of you? Would you recognize a wali or an angel? All right, so consider what is right guidance? What does it look like? So we can think about this a number of different ways. One way is to think through the names, the, the, the beautiful names. This is one interesting, important way. The beautiful names, the 99 names, and there are more, but we've got 99 that most Muslims recognize and, 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 and take some benefit from. Um, and this is the thing, so each of those names has, has an expression within, you know, within the, you know, a servant of the merciful, a servant of the compassionate. So the more that we draw near to Allah through his names, and each one of those names contains all the other names, you know, Allah is like a placeholder name, you know, like that's, that's not the right way of putting it, but it is a, uh, or maybe a culminating name that, that expresses each of the names, and yet each of the names expresses Allah and expresses the others, if you really sit and contemplate it. This is very interesting. The nearer that you draw near to Allah, then you are going to have certain behaviors arise and manifest as you go through a purification process. The closer you get to the truth, the more that your thoughts, your words, and your actions are going to be oriented to the truth and express the truth. The more you draw near to the compassionate one, the more compassionate you're going to be because all of Allah's creation is interconnected and interdependent. And humans, we are to be the inheritors of the earth in our spiritually mature state. We are to be the caretakers, the guides, and the guardians of all of creation. And contemplate this and pray on it really really sit with it and see what happens spend time in sajda the more that you are drawn near to the merciful one the more merciful you are going to be the more that you draw near to any of the different names so if you draw near to the creator you're going to be more and more creative this is a very interesting thing we are very special creations we have many uniquenesses because we're created by the unique one the absolutely unique and we need to be deeply rooted in the ancestral soils. Who are our ancestors? The prophets, peace be upon all of them. The walis, may Allah be pleased with all of them. We are rooted in prophetic soil. 
And I want us to really, really think about this. So right guidance. Also, what does right guidance suggest? Now, I'm gonna go at this in English for a second. So the word right is related to the right hand, all right? So the right hand is associated with a cluster of, of names of Allah and expressions, you know, like to, to, uh, of, of forgiveness, kindness, loving kindness, uh, you know, um, compassion, mercy, forgiveness. All these things are right-handed behaviors and justice. You know, like, because the left hand is associated with justice, with, with wrath, um, with judgment, meaning discernment. Because we need to discern reality. We need to assess everything around us and within. We're to be readers of reality. So we're assessing everything in order to see it clearly and properly in an accurate manner. And we are to judge in a just manner. To be just means to be honest and truthful in how we behave toward ourselves and others. And all of our justice um, should always be merciful, kind, and compassionate. You know, so it's like the right hand over the left as we hand clasp, you know, it's like, so this is the lens. So justice, it, it, it sees through the lens of mercy and compassion and loving kindness and forgiveness. So consider this. So right guidance, a rightly guided one is going to, you know, they're, someone who's rightly guided, they're going to manifest the excellences of, of, you know, they're going to be a servant of Allah through the names. Also, when we read the Quran, read it, it's a book of mirrors. Every single ayah, everything in the Quran is a mirror for you to see who you are and who you've been. And it's it's a way you need we need to pray through the Quran. Read the Quran prayerfully. You know, like so every single thing that it's it's saying about the, the kafirun, about the hypocrites, question and ask, are you behaving in this way? And we can correct that, inshallah. So let's go ahead and really think about. Um, how we're behaving toward others by contemplating in the Quran if we are behaving am I behaving in a hypocritical manner and really think about what hypocrite means am I behaving in an ungrateful manner you know in a state of kufr because it, it's not it's much more than what you've been told it is there is so much to the Quran the Quran is so deep it's a beautiful book of mirrors and it's always telling us to read the outer reality and the inner reality so read carefully and see, seek the patterns so and we can take a systematic scholarly approach to things by collecting as much data from around us as possible and within us to see things properly and then to sort them and see the patterns you know the patterns in our thoughts you know like if we keep going back to negative unhealthy thoughts we can pray through them and we can we can every time you see a healthy thing that's that's mentioned in the Quran something about being righteous being kind being forgiving forgiving Allah, make me a forgiving person. Make me kind. Make me wise. Make me righteous. Make me an exemplar of wisdom, of compassion, of forgiveness. Make me just to myself and others. Just in my thoughts and my words and my actions toward myself. Just in my thoughts, words, and actions toward others. Pray with the Quran. Use the Quran as a mirror to see who we are in this very moment and who we've been. Give thanks for all the excellences and the, the storms that we've come out of. We need to be among those who are appreciative. So what I'm telling, what I'm, what I'm suggesting to you is that we need to beware of false, rightly guided ones. Right now there are so many people popping up and they're claiming, you know, they're claiming all kinds of things for themselves. Nobody needs, the rightly guided one doesn't need to make an advertisement for himself. He doesn't have to go on a PR com campaign, you know. Um, and if so, you see somebody like that, pray for them that they would be rightly guided. Some of them are mentally ill. Some of them are unstable. Some of them are, are you know, they, they need some hugs. They need some love. I don't know. I mean, like, but we, like, right guidance, all of us need to be rectified. Do not wait for the Imam Mahdi to be, become rectified. Go into the deepest sajda right now. Make Toba and Tazkiyah. You know, turn away from unhealthy thoughts, words, and actions toward healthy, ethical, and pure thoughts, words, and actions. Seek to be purified in body and mind. And this also includes going through everything that you put into your mouth, onto your skin, onto your body, and your environment should be as pure and ethical as possible. So just consider what does it mean to be rightly guided? What does it look like? How is it expressed? How is it experienced? 
May we all be rightly guided individually and collectively. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.